Your OCD is an illusion created by your mind to hide the root causes. OCD is a terror you imagined, not to face your deepest fear inside your mind. It is like the lesser evil you chose. To help you understand this more easily, let's imagine a pot with many lids on top. When the water inside the pot boils up, among many lids, the weakest one will open up and release steam into the air. Let's think of the steam as the fears created by your problem. Then your OCD will be the weakest lid that is most likely to open up. Weak in the context does not mean that the pain you are feeling due to your symptoms are weak. I am aware that the smallest wound can hurt you real bad. It was the easiest connection that your anxious and terrified mind could make between your causes and symptoms. When your anxiety and pain creates steam, it will need an outlet. Say that you were feeling anxious, but you didn't know why you were feeling it. At that exact moment of anxiety, when you were about to leave your home, you found that gas valve wasn't turned off. Fire breaking out in one's apartment would be a very terrifying event to most of us. So, your mind is likely to delude yourself that you have been feeling anxious and terrified because you forgot to check your gas valve. This is how you develop a checking obsession that can stop you from feeling those negative feelings. This is the exact moment the steam inside you is released into the air through the weakest lid of yours. The same goes with the case when you find yourself contaminated by things you hate the most, when you were already feeling anxious and terrified. You will connect the contamination with the negative feelings and start to think that the contamination made you feel that way. Then you will have to continuously cleanse yourself. You will wash your hands repeatedly, maybe. Another moment of the weakest lid opening. But what if you find, instead of contamination, the evidence of your husband's affair? You will likely to connect your negative feelings with your husband's affair and start to doubt him endlessly. What if you connect your appearance with your negative feelings? What about your health or even a specific mistake you made? This is the reason why OCD has infinite variety of symptoms. A student will be likely to find a cause that hinders his or her study. It can be the habit of shaking one's legs or the incident of getting a paper cut in the eye. Anything can become a patient's symptom. When a person is feeling highly anxious, any real-life causes and happenings can become symbolic to him or her. People tend to develop OCD in their adolescence. I think the hormonal change people experience in their adolescence combined with their immature bodily state cause them to feel extremely anxious, elevating their steam pressure. I will use the analogy of a pot again to talk about two characteristics of OCD. The first is that OCD comes with a point of a failure. Most of OCD patients tend to remember the exact moment they developed their OCD. This is because their life experiences are completely different before and after the opening of the weakest lead. Failures tend to exist at these starting points of OCD. OCD patients are in fear of provocative moments that should never have happened, such as the moments they made mistakes that they should never have made, the moments they failed their exams, the moments they had to spend time with people they did not want to be with, 
the moment their health was at risk, and the moment they failed to meet their parents' expectations. In the analogy with a pot with many leads, these failures equate to thick, heavy, and strong leads that should have opened. These are the fears that should have been dealt with. These failures are considered strong because they are the ones people refuse to reveal. They are the ones hard to face. They are the ones too heavy to be opened up. At the moment you fail the most important task in your life and having a hard time facing the fact that you have failed, the weakest lead is chosen. The weakest lead is an important stimulus that you imprint in your mind at a moment of crisis. It is a realistic solution to evade the moment that you fail to do what really is important to you. It also is an effective point of eruption. This is the reason why the symptoms that can be connected most easily to what you are feeling at the moment of crisis are chosen when the strong lid remains closed. It is your subconsciousness that is creating a delusion to protect you from shock. Of course, it wasn't your intention to do so. It was a response on the subconscious level. This is the reason why all obsessive behaviors take forms of easy-to-do tasks. Again, I am not saying that these obsessive behaviors are not painful. Unlike the pain you are feeling, your strategy for survival is to do things easy to figure out and manage. Even though the pain Obsessive behaviors such as checking, doubting, watching, thinking delusional thoughts bring about is immense. Obsessively repeating such behaviors is a task relatively easy for your mind to handle. OCD is the end product of your mind finding an easy way out, because in most of the cases, success is hard but failure is easy. The second point is that once a way out is created, you are going to have a hard time blocking it again. Even though your obsessive behaviors are a chosen substitute, your mind will continuously target them as they are an outlet already created. An open lid does not close on its own. Steam will continue to escape through it as an exit, as the reason of water boiling. Fire is still there. Maybe your subconsciousness is making a choice based on effectiveness instead of what is right and wrong. It will become a tendency more firm as it becomes the habit of your mind. Your pain will become a hiding place for your subconscious mind. That is why it cannot stop despite the pain. Your mind is trying to forget pain with pain. This is the way your compulsive mind operates. You need to understand it.